While VR game design is fundamentally different than flat screen game design, Valve has done an excellent job in Half-Life Alex of keeping the essence of what makes a Half-Life game. Though the pace is slower and more thoughtful, those who have played the prior titles will feel themselves thrust into the Half-Life universe more deeply than ever before. Gameplay in Half-Life Alex is split between exploration, puzzle solving, and combat. Combat is less of a run-and-gun affair than the prior games, and while you'll be confronted with fewer enemies, individual enemies are more threatening, and combat takes on a decidedly more personal tone. Although the game is essentially linear, there's so much visual and interactive detail in the environment around you that Half-Life Alex still fosters a sense of exploration. As you explore, you'll want to keep your eyes out for the game's scarce resources, like ammo, health, and grenades. Where other VR titles sometimes make resource collection feel tedious, the thoughtful placement, and even occasional mini-puzzles, make finding resources in Half-Life Alex feel rewarding. This is aided in a huge way by the gravity gloves, which let you grab objects from a distance. To use the gravity gloves, you'll first tether to an object and then do a pulling gesture to initiate a force pull. This causes the object to launch in a satisfying arc right into your hand to be caught. This might seem like a subtle tweak to the existing force pull mechanics in other VR games, but in practice, it's engaging, fun, and almost makes you feel like you have a sort of telekinetic superpower. The system is so successful that I expect to see this approach to force pull used in many future VR titles. One of the things you'll often be collecting thanks to your gravity glove powers is resin, which is used for upgrading your guns. Resin is not in ample supply, so diligent explorers who manage to find most of it along their way will upgrade their weapons sooner than others. Upgrades feel meaningful and can only be done at upgrade stations which are occasionally found throughout the game. While the weapons in Half-Life Alex are satisfying in both their interactions and firing, unfortunately there's not many to speak of. Instead of picking up guns wherever, you'll only get access to three weapons throughout the game which are bound to you. There's the pistol, shotgun, and a combine pulse rifle. Worse, as you upgrade the pistol and the pulse rifle, they overlap instead of diverge in their combat roles, making them less unique over time. I was disappointed to not see a wider variety of Half-Life's unique weapons represented in the game, especially when there's opportunities abound for VR-specific interactions. In particular, I often found myself wanting a precision long-range option in Half-Life Alex. The iconic Half-Life crossbow would have been an awesome fit, not only for its interactive affordances, like loading and heating the rebar bolt, but also for the experience of pinning enemies to walls and being able to see that up close in VR. The tight weapon set seems partly the result of Valve's choice to largely avoid linked two-handed interactions. While operating your weapons does require two hands, there's no weapon in the game that's held with both hands, and very few moments in the game that involve two-handed interactions. The game's small arsenal also impacts it in other ways. While in Half-Life 2 it felt like a reward to discover the rarer ammo for the game's unique guns, like rebar for the crossbow or orbs for the pulse rifle's secondary fire, with less guns, there's fewer things for Half-Life Alex to reward players with for their exploration. Resin is always a welcomed find, but it can be a bit of a letdown to spot a hidden supply box and smash it open only to find a single pistol magazine or a health syringe inside. Combat pacing starts slowly, with headcrab zombies as the main threat in the first third of the game. It's clear that Valve wanted to give players ample time to learn how to move, use their gravity gloves, and operate their weapons before introducing them to more dynamic enemies. Even so, the headcrab zombies can feel like a threat in close quarters, and Valve has no qualms about putting your combat training to the test by making sure that you can reload in the dark. Later in the game, you'll face off against Combine soldiers, which are distinctly more threatening. Even on normal difficulty, combat is relatively unforgiving, and a single soldier won't hesitate to take you down if you aren't careful. You'll absolutely want to find some cover, and keep your head down when the bullets start flying your way. Alex? Alex, you still there? 
Like weapons, enemy variety is minimal. Combine soldiers come in roughly three types of difficulty, but don't present particularly unique threats. Especially in the later stages of the game, when your guns have seen some upgrades, killing combine soldiers amounts to aiming your laser sight at their head and holding the trigger until they die. Getting up close and personal with the shotgun is riskier, but far more satisfying. Though more sporadic, there's a few interesting standout enemies that add some intrigue, including a unique enemy that's part of a masterful sequence that's simply unmatched in execution elsewhere in VR. I don't want to spoil this for you, so I'll just say that I enjoyed my time with Jeff. Though I wish the game offered a greater variety of weapons and enemies, the limited roster is part of a broader trend in Half-Life Alex, which is all about keeping gameplay streamlined and fun. Valve has managed to craft Alex in a way which avoids much of the clunk seen in many other VR titles, and I felt compelled to keep pushing forward throughout the 12 hours it took me to beat the campaign. From the first moment you find yourself standing in the menu screen, it's clear that there's a certain gravity to Half-Life Alex that you'll be hard-pressed to find anywhere else in VR. This is what it feels like to step into the struggle for City 17. With heaps of environmental and interactive detail, Valve has crafted an incredibly immersive world. Aside from nearly every small object in the game being physically interactive, there's just so much to look at. Collectively, Half-Life Alex is the most detailed VR game I've ever played. With consistently great art direction and impressively crisp anti-aliasing, the game's visuals are top-notch. While Alex impresses with its interactive details like turnable sink faucets, flippable light switches, which actually turn on lights, and liftable toilet seats, there are a few immersion misses. For one, there's essentially no melee in the game at all. This is a bit jarring when many of the game's enemies want to get right up in your face, and especially after Boneworks showed us how useful it is just to be able to stagger enemies by shoving them back with your hands when they get too close. Another immersion issue is that equipping and unequipping weapons is done with a gesture menu, and, once equipped, the weapons stick to your pre-selected weapon hand, this means that weapons can't be passed between your hands, thrown, or anything else, making them feel decidedly less like part of the game's otherwise quite physical world. Much of Alex's rich immersion comes from its incredibly detailed world, including occasional side paths which sometimes reveal optional scenes which serve to reward your curiosity and flesh out the game world. What do you think they're doing in here? Looks like they're milking the leggies. While Half-Life Alex's story is engaging enough to justify the ongoing action, not all that much really happens beyond what's necessary to keep you moving toward your goal. That's not to say that Alex isn't consequential to the plot of Half-Life overall, though the way that it intersects with the plot of the other games feels sudden, significant, and a bit clumsy. Avoiding spoilers, I'm not quite sure what the reaction of most players will be, but I think there's likely to be a lot of discussion about this post-launch. You okay? I'm okay. Let's go find Dad. Half-Life Alex supports teleportation, dashing, continuous locomotion, and a range of other comfort options like snap turn adjustments, real ladder climbing, and whether or not you want barnacles to be able to actually lift you off the ground. Throughout my time playing Half-Life Alex, I felt that the game did a great job of maintaining comfort. Valve clearly spent time thinking about how Half-Life Alex should work with each of the VR controllers out there. While there's some minor ways in which they don't follow established input patterns that VR vets would be familiar with, they did a great job overall, and no matter which controller you use, the game feels equally playable. 
Alex feels like it was first and foremost designed for standing play in room-scale play spaces with teleportation or dashing. Continuous locomotion works well, though the game doesn't feature a real jump. Instead, it uses a mantle which sort of slides you up onto objects, or a teleport jump when you need to cross a gap. Those with tight play spaces will likely feel cramped at times, as many of the game's mechanics seem to want you to reach and lean quite a bit, especially the power puzzles where you use Alex's multi-tool to scan for power lines in the walls. If you're especially claustrophobic or unable to handle immersive horror, Half-Life Alex could well be a challenge. Some of the scarier sections of the game will have you in the dark with a flashlight as your only source of light, constraining the limited field of view of your headset even more. Half-Life Alex is one of the most richly detailed and immersive VR games to date, and a stunning take on the iconic franchise for virtual reality. City 17 and the sci-fi conflict at its core are incredibly well realized throughout. Though it's slower than the run-and-gun pace of the originals, Alex feels like a Half-Life game through and through as it successfully shifts between combat, exploration, puzzles, and even some notable horror. While the game doesn't offer much in the way of mechanical innovation, and the roster of weapons and enemies left something to be desired, Valve has polished the game to a bright sheen, the result of which is an absolute must-play experience. <laughs> 